Hello everyone, this is uh, Mike Grady from Novastar. Today I will work with my colleague Gilbert give you this training. Firstly, welcome to Novastar webinar. Before we get started, please pay attention to the notice, some notice. Firstly, please send me your name and email address and company to get today's PPD and we will email the notice for future topics and the schedule. Secondly, for better effect, it is best to mute your microphone. And uh, feel free to text your question in chat window by follow the format for Q1, Q2, and Q3, and my colleague will answer your question in the QA sessions. If you still have some question which is not related to the, to the low latency solution, you can email us and we can just uh, to answer you separately in order to have an uh, efficient webinar training. Okay, then let's get started. Let's invi invite my colleague Gilbert to give you the today's training, low latency. Okay, Gilbert, please. Okay, so hello everyone. This is Gilbert from Noah Star. Can you guys hear me? Okay, okay, good. So today I would like to share with up. Uh, I'd like to share about our low latency solution. So for the low latency group, before we go through more details about the low latency solution, I'd like to share two cases about the problems that caused by the latency. So first of all, it's about the TV broadcasts, like the sports games. We watch a lot of sports games, but when we watch those sports games, there are always someone near us making the chair in at once, which makes you feel slower than the others. And the second one is about a conference room application. So from the picture, we can see the spokesperson is raising her hand now, but it's not shows on an LED screen. So the LED screen display is uh, slower than it actually is. It's, it's not, not a good experience for the people in the room to attend this conference. So from those two cases, we can see there were some latency, there were some delay happens during the video transmission, but what caused the latency? Why there are latency happens? So from the standard LED control system, the whole system structure should be the video source going to sending card and the sending card transmit the data to the receiving card and then go to the LED modules. Finally, we can get the video source or our LED screen. So every step of the whole process needs some types to process the data, like doing the decoding, encoding, and transmitting. So they, they need some time to do the data processing. So those time are latency. So let's take a look about the standard sending card system latency. For the standard sending card system latency, the sending card will cause one frame delay. And for the receiving card, it will cause two frames delay. And for the drive chips, it depends on what kind of drive IC do you use. If you use PWM IC, they will cause one frame delay. If you just use the common drive chips, there is no delay. So for the standard sending card system, the total latency time would be three to four frames. I know a lot of you guys may use our only one controller. So what about the latency for the only one controller system? So for the only one controller system, because uh, for the only one, we just combine the sending card function and the video processing function together. So compare with the sending card only one controller itself will cause two frames delay. And from the receiving card and drive chips, there is no change from the receiving card still two frames. And from drive IC, it still need to know what kind of drive IC do you use. 
So for the all you want standard all you want controller system, the total latency would be four to five frames. And uh, someone may ask, what the exact latency for one frame? How long one frame is? For the 60 hertz frame rate video source, one frame is about 16.67 milliseconds. And according to the research, our human eyes can sense 30 milliseconds delay. So no matter you use the sending card system or on your own controller system, the latency are all much higher than 30 milliseconds. So which, which means our human eyes can see the latency on the LED screen. So for the latency problems on the LED screen, what can we do? Actually, Noah Star work out the low latency solution to help to improve the latency to solve the problems. So for the standard sending card, for the sending card system, low latency solution, uh, for the sending cards, we have MCDRL660 Pro and MCDRL4K. Those two products can support low latency features. And for the receiving card, we need to use our high-end receiving card, Armor Series 8S and 810S Plus. And then the system structure just same as uh, the standard sending card system. It's sending card, go to receiving card, and then go to an LED screen. But how much we can improve the latency? What the latency we can reduce to? Here's a chart shows more details about the latency improvement. But before we check the details here, I would like to clear one thing. It's about the low latency. The low latency feature for the sending card and the receiving card are independent of each other, which means you can only enable the low latency feature for the sending card or just for receiving card. But what we recommend it is enable both sending card and the receiving card low latency mode to get better experience. So as we already know for the standard sending card system, sending card is one frame delay, receiving card is two frames, plus the latency of the drive chips, the total latency is three to four frames. But what about we enable the low latency for the sending card? If we enable the low latency feature for the sending card, the sending card latency will be changed to less than one millisecond. So it, it's about one frame latency improvement. And uh, when we enable the latency, low latency feature from the receiving card, and the receiving card latency will be changed from two frames to one frame. So, so there are also one frame improvement. So when we enable both sending card and the receiving card low latency, the sending card latency will be less than one millisecond, and the receiving card is just one frame and uh, plus the drive IC latency, the total latency from the look uh, is uh, one to two frame. So there were two frame improvement when we use the low latency solution compared with the standard sending card system. So this is about the latency improvement from the sending card system. And for the all you one controller system, we got Pro UHD Junior which can support low latency. And for the receiving card, we still need to use 8S and 810S plus. And uh, what the latency improvement for the all one controller system, we got another chart here. For the standard all one controller system, we, we just mentioned before, the total latency will be four to five frames. And uh, when we enable the low latency feature for the all one controller, and the all one controller latency will be changed to close to one frame. A little bit higher than one frame, but we can just uh, say, take it as one frame. It's, much, it's very close to one frame. And from the receiving card, when enable low latency, it also will change from two frames to one frame delay. So when we enable both all you want controller low, lat low latency and the receiving card low latency feature, uh, the total latency from the low latency system will be two to three frames. 
one frame from on your controller, one frame from Restini card, and the other frame uh, latency is from drive chips. It depends what kind of drive IC do you use. So this is about our low latency solution for both sending card system and all your own controller system. Uh, we all, because we, we just go through the low latency solution, we already know what kind of hardware we need to use and what, what the latency can improve. So is there anything we need to pay attention to when we use the low latency solution? The answer is yes. There were some of the preconditions of the low latency system. The first one is about the gene lock. We need to disable the gene lock because when the sending card received the, the sending card, if we enable the gene lock, the sending card need to wait the wear signal from the gene lock generator. So it takes some time, which means you cannot do the image processing and sending in real time. That make the low latency impossible. And the second one is about the mirror feature. The mirror feature is a useful feature for the 660 Pro, which can help to get the creative images. But when we enable the mirror feature, uh, the sending card need to get the entire frame data first. If not, there will something happens on the image position, which means there was uh, it will be cause some problems on your LED screen. So we need to disable the mirror feature when we use the low latency. And the third one is about the source. We cannot use the SDI interland signal. Because in the sending card received the interland signal, the first thing the sending card need to do is do the, the interlancing. The interlancing is an option that need to take some time to do the video source merge and the process. So that makes the low latency or just in real time image output impossible. And the last one, preconditions, is about the Ethernet port output. Uh, it has to be vertical. In the past, when it, Ethernet port output, there was a one frame time buffer. So which means no matter how you connected your panels, how you do the screen connections, the Ethernet port has enough time to output the image. But when we enable the low latency, the time buffer will be changed to just 10 rows. That time is, uh, that time is uh, much less than one frame. So and also more than 512 pixels in the horizontal direction will cause a significant delay. So we need to do the vertical connection to minimize the weight of ports. Uh, maybe that part is a little bit confusing, but just keep in mind, no matter how we do the screen connections, for each port output, the maximum weight is 512 pixels. Make sure the weights of the purport not exceed 512 pixels. So that's all for preconditions for the low latency system. Next, it's about the how to enable the low latency. Because the low latency feature default status is off, because we do not want to want the standard products lose the flexibility. So for the senders, uh, if you want to enable low latency, you need to go to the LCD software, logged into the LCD software, and go to settings. There was an option called adjust screen effect. And you can see from this picture, there is a function called enable sending card low latency. We just need to check this box to enable the low latency for the sending cards. And for Pro UHD Junior and the 660 Pro, you can also enable the low latency or front panel. There is an option under the function list called low latency, you just enable it. So this is about the, the senders, how we apply it, how we enable low latency features. And 
from the receiving card, it as it can as we still need to go to no LCD software and just go to the same page as the sending card low latency enable. There was another option called enable receiving card low latency. Just check the box to enable the low latency from the receiving card. Just side by the enable sending card low latency. So this is about how to enable the low latency, how to apply the low latency function to our system. So here we do a summary, because we already go through the, uh, the latency, why cause the, what, what cause the latency, and also what the one star low latency solution. The third one is we, we go through in the precondition's from the low latency system. And uh, last, we just go through how to enable the low latency, how to apply it to our system. So that's pretty much about our low latency solution. Uh, with NovaStar low latency solution, you can get best experience from the live show. So this is about the pr presentation of today's WebDare training. Next part is about Q&A. If you have any questions, you can put it to chat window. My colleague, Alan, will help you to answer the questions one by one. 